What up, people? Episode 123, Wake and Rake Podcast. Your host, as always, Danny Vetti. Subscribe, download, leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. That's how we're able to do the things that we do. Welcome to the World Series, people. 2024 World Series, Los Angeles Dodgers, New York Yankees. It's as much star power as you could possibly ask for. I suppose there's six MVPs between Judge, former MVPs, I should, I should say. Freeman, Judge, Otani. You got Cy Young's, Garrett Cole. Uh, Kershaw is obviously not on the Dodgers roster, but um, star power across the board. The two two of the biggest payrolls in Major League Baseball, which I understand everybody's got some mixed feelings on that one. But personally, I kind of touched on this on episode 122 that we did last week. I, I think if we saw Detroit Tigers versus, uh, let me think of who on the National League side of things had a lower payroll. Um, even if it was who who was on the National League side of things? Let me think. Milwaukee. That's a good example. Everyone in the National League actually had pretty much pretty high payrolls. Mets have a, the number one payroll in baseball. Braves are top ten in baseball. Uh, excuse me, in payroll. Padres are top ten in payroll. Dodgers, Phillies, both top ten in payroll. The only exception was Milwaukee. So my point in saying that is that if we got Detroit Tigers. Milwaukee Brewers in the World Series, I guarantee you, owners this offseason would not want to spend money on a roster. If they saw teams with payrolls hovering around $100 million, I don't think there would have been too much incentive to be spending money on free agents and uh, investing into a roster. So for those that are upset that it's Yankees and Dodgers, look at it like this. Uh, Yeah, it, it stinks to be bullied monetarily by these organizations that have, frankly, just more money than the rest of the league. But at least they're investing in a roster. At least they're investing in a fan base. I I think there are far worse matchups that we could have had. And not to mention, you're getting two of the best teams in baseball. You get the number one overall seed in the American League, New York Yankees, and you're getting the number one overall seed on the National League side of things in the Los Angeles Dodgers. So you're essentially getting the two best regular season teams the two best teams here in 2024, at least that's what it says on paper, and you're getting them in a World Series and best of seven. So um, if you don't live in Los Angeles, if you don't live in New York, maybe you don't have a horse in a race, but I think it's going to be an entertaining product. We will talk World Series. We will recap ALCS, NLCS just a little bit uh, before we get into the thick of the World Series. Uh, but first, bet online. Basketball fans, it's that time of the year again. The NBA is back from opening tip-off to buzzer beaters. Bet Online has you covered with the best odds, biggest promotions, and live in game betting on all your favorite teams. This season, every game matters. Bet Online has every stat, matchup, breakdown, and live odds to bet on during the game. It's not just the NBA. Bet Online has odds on everything from football, MLB playoffs, NHL to political props. Head to the website today get, to get in on the action with America's most trusted site for online wagering. Bet Online, the game starts here. I need to do more research on the political props. That's intriguing. They have uh, Donald Trump versus Kamala Harris odds to win the presidential race. I would guess. I don't know. Got to check out. Uh, Got to check out Bet Online to find out. Let's talk baseball. I want to look back to to the uh, American League Championship Series first. I want to give credit where credit is due, and that's Stephen Vogt. Stephen Vogt is probably going to be your American League Manager of the Year for the regular season. But what he was able to do with a Cleveland roster that has notoriously every single year, a low payroll. Nobody thought Cleveland was going to be anything this year. They were not the favorites coming in to the season to win a division. They were not, uh, the odds were against them to even make the playoffs this year in Cleveland. They were behind Minnesota to win a division, odds-wise coming into this year. Uh, I think they were even maybe, I don't have the odds in front of me. I want to say that they were even behind Detroit as uh, I think they were third favorites in the American League Central. Well, Cleveland Guardians wound up with the two seed. They got a bye, defeated Detroit in the second round in the American League DS. And yeah, they lost in five games to the New York Yankees, but two of those games were were to the bitter end. It took a Juan Soto magical moment in game five. Uh, you had a magical game in, in game three with the John Kenzie Noel. Big Christmas home run and then a walk-off by David Fry. So I, I just want to... Give credit where credit is due. I mean, Cleveland, what a fantastic year that they had. Stephen Vogt, a guy that really wasn't recruited 
in high school very much at all. He wound up going to Division II Azusa Pacific down in Southern California to play his baseball. Uh, got drafted in the middle rounds. Uh, wound up finally making it to the big leagues with the Oakland Athletics. Came an all-star with them, a two-time all-star with them. He's beloved in Oakland. Uh, one of the fan favorites uh, in that entire region. And uh, you know, hits was his final game in Oakland as a professional ball player because he was going to retire. He hits the home run. I was actually at that ball game and fans went berserk. And again, he's just, he's an Oakland legend for a number of different reasons, but just one of the really great people in this league. And he goes to Seattle once he is done retired from the game of baseball, or at least playing that is goes to Seattle as an assistant. He steps into a managerial role two years after playing and right away has this much success with that roster to a roster that, you know, lost Shane Bieber, their best pitcher, your American League Cy Young contender every single year. They lost him to start the season and they didn't they didn't they didn't stumble. They didn't hesitate. And they just kept on rolling. So a lot of credit goes to Stephen Boat. Uh the Joe Kenzie Noel, big Christmas, game tying home run in the ninth inning in game four. Let, let's just take a listen to to Brian Anderson's call as it was phenomenal. I mean, that's awesome. Uh, the biggest present under the tree, BA's call on that fun was phenomenal. Uh, there were a lot of criticisms toward like the TBS broadcast, especially in the American League Divisional Series with who's on the broadcast during Yankees Royals. I think Brian Anderson, uh, who was on the broadcast, was your play-by-play -play broadcaster for this Cleveland Yankees series. He's one of the most underrated in the game. He does a lot of stuff for NBA on TNT. He's, of course, the Milwaukee Brewers Um number one play, uh, broadcaster for television. He's he's great, man. He, he really is. He's, he does a phenomenal job on, on both sides of, you know, what no matter who's playing, whether he's doing national TV, local broadcast. There's a lot of good sound from this series, uh, including Noel. But uh, I, I talked about Stephen Vogt, how special of a person he is. And I think this was in his post-game pro uh, press conference after losing the series to the Yankees. And uh, he had this to say, and I just want everybody to, to take a listen. The way I do it is I ask myself what's true. You can write a narrative in your head and spin yourself down a negative path and beat yourself up and second guess and go back. But what's true is you made what you thought was the best decision in the moment. And then you leave it behind. And I have a mentor of mine that says, learn the lesson, leave the event. You leave the event behind and you learn everything you can from it. And there's no going back. Everyone makes mistakes. Everyone makes good decisions, bad decisions, or they just didn't work. Just kind of a snippet of just who he is. You know, um, I'm coaching a high school baseball team right now, or I'm assisting right now at a high school baseball team. What a terrible, terrible practice on Wednesday. Um, you know, we got on the kids and, and we told them it's not acceptable. And uh, I, I was... I'm I'm still contemplating because we have practice later today, and I'm still contemplating how am I going to attack today? How am I going to approach today? What's going to be kind of the the theme of today's practice? And just listening to see vote, it, it kind of gave me my answer. It's like you know, we all make mistakes, we have bad days. As long as those mistakes don't accumulate, pile on top of one another, let's flush it, forget about it, and get on with your day. Because we all have bad days. I feel like there is something in the air. Today is Thursday, October 24th. I don't know if anybody else had a grumpy day October 23rd on Wednesday. But I feel like there was just something in the air. So the way that I'm going to attack today's practice with these kids is yesterday never happened. Mistakes happen. We all have crappy days. Uh, we're not always at our best. Let's flush it. Let's get better. Let's learn from it. That's the key. Let's learn from it. But let's move on. Steve Vogt, one of the best, one of the best dudes in baseball. 
I just wanted to spend some time and give proper due and proper credit. He will get proper credit by winning American League Manager of the Year, which will be announced here in a couple of weeks. To the Yankees, which is kind of a good segue. Um, Juan Soto, the magical home run that he hit to propel the Yankees um, in Game 5 and, and push them into the World Series. I, I just, a little perspective on this. So Juan Soto is 25 years old. He doesn't turn 26 for another week. He's already won an American League pennant. He's already won an, a National League pennant. He's made two World Series. He's made four All-Star teams. He's won four Silver Sluggers. He's won a batting title. He's been traded twice. He's already rejected a $400 plus million dollar contract extension, possibly from two teams. And he's played for three different squads. He's 25 years old. Turns 26 next week. 25 years old, three teams, two World Series. Uh, for perspective, Aaron Judge was a rookie at 25 years old. Shohei Otani hadn't even made an all-star team yet. He had one rookie of the year two years prior to that, but Otani hadn't even made an all-star team yet at 25 years old. Juan Soto's already, I want to say he's 10th amongst active players. He's top 10 amongst active players and based on balls. Like he's in all time ranks. He's 25 years old. He's not, you can make the case Juan Soto's not even in the, the, the prime of his career. A lot of people like to say that your prime is between 25 and, and 30. Juan Soto, 25 years old. He's heading to his second World Series. This one with the New York Yankees. Uh, and Padre fans had a great season. And I think it's breaking their hearts a little bit that they'll have to watch Juan Soto in the World Series because, uh, you know, it didn't quite work out in San Diego, but I think Soto proved this year just how special of a player he is. National League side of things. Let's make things real clear here. Los Angeles Dodgers are not an underdog story. Okay, they're not. But we're all looking for storylines now, you know, this year. And when you look at the two or two of the highest payrolls in Major League Baseball and the Yankees and the Dodgers, it's hard to find underdog stories. However, I will say this about the Dodgers. I think this year in particular, they're more likable than any of the years prior. Um, they've made the playoffs 11 straight seasons. They've won 10 division titles out of, out of the last 11 seasons. Uh, the only exception was when the San Francisco Giants won 107 games back in 2021. So the Dodgers are in it every single year. And a lot of times we look at their payroll and we look at the players on the roster and it's just from a casual fan standpoint, there's not a whole lot to root for. There's a lot of Dodger haters for that very reason. I look at the roster this year. There's a lot of likable players on this Dodger roster. Again, I want to repeat and emphasize, it's not an underdog story, but this is a very likable team and a very likable roster. I think a lot of the reason why there are so many Dodger haters is because whenever they put themselves in the hole, what the Dodgers often do is they just spend more money and they pull themselves right out of it. And they did that here in 2024 to a degree. I don't, I don't want to overlook the fact that they spent a billion dollars on Otani, Yamamoto, not to mention they already have bets, they already have Freeman. So it's a ridiculous amount of money that they have invested in this roster. And they absolutely have put themselves in a position and they absolutely do have a luxury that a lot of other teams do not have. But show Otani, if you can't get over the, the betting scandal, that's on you. If, you, if you'd believe... If you want to look into the conspiracy theories, that's fine. That's your prerogative. But just as a guy at the press conference table, on the field, his persona, his personality, the way he smiles constantly, Shohei Otani is a very, very likable player. Not to mention, he is, in my opinion, the greatest player of not just this generation, but in my opinion, Shohei Otani is the best baseball player in baseball history. It's my personal opinion. That's my prerogative. So you have Shohei Otani, very likable, very fun to watch. Just ask MLB on Fox because they like to do the three batters away. That's how much they like Otani. Mookie Betts, how could you not like the guy? A guy that is one of the most athletic players, not just in baseball, but across the sports land. Like a, a, a ridiculously good bowler. Um, I've seen him catch passes before. Just a great athlete. He won a World Series with Boston. It's looking, he, he did win the World Series in 2020 with the Dodgers. 
Of course, we all know the context in which that World Series was won. It was a 60-game condensed season. So he's looking to win his first World Series away from the Red Sox uh, in a full season. Mookie Betts, very likable. Freddie Freeman, ever since his Atlanta days, we've all loved Freddie Freeman. What's there not to like about Freddie Freeman? There were Braves fans that were disgruntled that he left Atlanta for L.A. Look, he was born and raised in Los Angeles, California. There were rumors that the agent like didn't disclose all the information and free agency. Freddie Freeman's a good dude. Heard nothing but great things about who he is as a person, who he is in the clubhouse. Otani, Betts, Freeman, good dudes. And I haven't even gotten to a guy named Teoscar Hernandez yet. He's really overlooked on this roster. Understandably so. There's a lot of superstars on the Dodgers roster. But Teoscar Hernandez, uh, a guy that signed a one-year deal this year. He struggled last year in Seattle. Signs a one-year deal here in L.A. And it was really a prove-it year. I think he probably could have garnered a two, three-year contract in free agency this past offseason from somebody, maybe somebody like San Francisco, maybe. They love the guys from Seattle, Mitch Hanniger. Um, But Teo, he really bet on himself this year, signed a one-year $23 million contract with the Dodgers because he wants to get broke off eventually in free agency. And I think he knew he was capable of doing much more than what he did in Seattle in 23. And he had a career year. He won the home run derby, 30-plus home runs. He was probably the more overlooked, underrated superstar in that Dodgers lineup. Amongst all the injuries that they suffered, Teo was always there. And Teo, if you ever hear him interviewed, Ben, he, he listened to a Teoscar Hernandez post-game press conference, and it's like watching an episode of like Ted Lasso. It just makes you feel happy. His smile, his charisma, um, the way he makes the reporters smile with his answer. He's got this, this charm that not everybody has. Um, Teoscar Hernandez, very, very likable player. After the home run, the, they do the post game, or excuse me, the uh, the post home run in game interviews. Drives me crazy. I can't stand them. Wait till after the game to talk to these players. We'll leave that conversation for another day. But Teo is always, always very open. Just, just a good, good dude. That, that's the theme of today's episode. Good dudes in baseball. Stephen Vogt, Joey Otani, Mookie, Teo, good dudes. And then two, I, I I understand Clayton Kershaw isn't on this roster. I understand he's not healthy right now. He's not going to be pitching in the playoffs. But I really do want Clayton Kershaw to be able to walk away when all is said and done, when he decides to retire, hang him up for good. I want Clayton Kershaw to be able to tell everyone I want a legit 162-game World Series. There's no asterisks. Uh, there's no questions of of how legitimate the World Series was. You know, you could say that Kershaw wasn't on the roster for the World Series. That's fine. Do what you got to do. But Kershaw is, he, he was the greatest pitcher of the 2010s. Him, Scherzer, Verlander, those three guys. And, of course, Verlander has World Series. Max Scherzer has World Series with the Nationals. Uh, I want Kershaw to be in that same conversation when it comes to team achievement. And so uh, just my point is, is that this is not an underdog story. The Dodgers are who the Dodgers are and they spend money and they have the biggest attendance in baseball. And um, Andrew Friedman is an absolute workhorse in that front office. But I, I just think that this Dodgers team is a lot more likable and you can get behind this team this year a lot more than you could in previous seasons. So um, in the very least, there's a lot of people that are probably listening to this episode who are Giant fans, Padre fans, Diamondback fans, just because I do live on the West Coast and a lot of our audience is on the West Coast and a lot of them root against the Dodgers. I'll say this, a guy that grew up in Northern California, there's a lot of likable figures on the Dodgers this season. Uh, a lot of likable figures that you can root for in the World Series. World Series preview. Take a short break. Catch my breath. And we'll talk a little bit more about the X Factors for each team. Let's talk X Factors. One of my favorite conversations coming into the World Series is the whole who's going to win World Series MVP. A lot of the reason is because it's not it, it, it's not always your superstar players that win World Series MVP. A lot of the times it's Jorge Soler with the Braves or it's Steve Pierce with the Red Sox, Cody Ross with the Giants. It's like these lightning in a bottle players that you don't see come out of the woodworks and just get hot at the right time. Kiki Hernandez for the Dodgers. 
Uh, so I, I enjoy that topic a lot more than I do who's going to win the series because I, I don't know. Nobody knows who's going to win the series. I can tell you on paper who I think has the edge. I think the Yankees have more depth or at least more health on their side right now. It doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to win. Nobody had the Detroit Tigers get into the ALCS or ALDS, excuse me. Um, but so I love talking MVPs for the for the World Series. I love talking X factors because I do think you can look on paper and you can strategize who might fall into those categories. Aaron Judge is not going to see a good pitch to hit all series. One, the Dodgers pitching has been great. With a few exceptions, they give up 10 runs to the Padres one game. But the Padres, you could argue, it's probably the second best team in the playoffs behind the Dodgers. If you were to look at if, if odds makers, for example, if we restarted the 2024 postseason and you saw odds makers give odds for each of the postseason teams, same teams, I think it'd probably go Dodgers one, Padres two to make the World Series and then Yankees after that. That would that would be my guess. Not that I'm a Vegas expert, but that would be my guess. Um, World Series MVP odds. Take a look. Otani, of course, the odds favorite. Plus 220. So if you put down $100, Otani wins the MVP. You win $220 plus your money back. Aaron Judge, second at plus 490. Juan Soto, plus 550. Mookie Betts, plus 700. Giancarlo Stanton, your American League Championship MVP, plus 950. Max Muncie, Freddie Freeman, Tasker Hernandez, and Tommy Edmond follow after that. So who's going to win MVP? Uh, like I said, a lot of the times it's, it's your, it's your role players. It's not because I just said the Dodgers not going to give Aaron judge anything to hit. Aaron judge hasn't gotten anything to hit this entire postseason, And everybody's wondering, Oh my gosh, Aaron judge is sucking in the postseason. What's going on. It's because opposing teams is saying, all right, if the Yankees are going to beat us, they're going to beat us with Giancarlo Stanton. They're going to beat us with Glaber Torres. Um, they're not going to beat us with Juan Soto and Aaron judge. And I think opposing teams have, for the most part, done a really good job of that. Same with the Dodgers. Otani, especially before the National League Championship Series, the Padres did not give Shohei Otani anything to hit. Anytime Otani came up in late innings, it was Trevor Scott who came in with his 99-mile-an-hour fastball and a wipe-away slider. And Otani was, I think, 0 for 4 with four strikeouts against Trevor Scott in that National League Divisional Series. When it comes postseason time, look at Alex Rodriguez's postseason career. There are a lot of players, a lot of players who struggle, superstars, who struggle in postseason time. And a lot of it is because they do not get good pitches to hit because opposing teams are not going to allow said player to beat them in a postseason. If a team comes in and Glaber Torres beat you, uh, a Tommy Edmond beat you, you tip your cap and you say, look, our game plan was not to let the superstars beat us, and they didn't, and they still won. You tip your cap, live to see another day. So World Series MVP should be interesting. X factors, which could essentially turn into an MVP for one of for one of these guys. I think Dodgers X factor uh, coming into the series is going to be a third starter. So you look at the pitching staff for the Dodgers, who have been crippled by injuries all season long. Game one is going to be Garrett Cole versus Jack Flaherty. Jack Flaherty has been a bit of a coin flip in his tenure with the Los Angeles Dodgers since being acquired from the Detroit Tigers midseason. Um, but he looked good uh, against the Padres in the National League Divisional Series. Uh, hasn't been able to pitch deep in the ball games quite yet, but the Dodgers really haven't needed it because their bullpen has been so dominant. So Cole this year, 1-0 with a 3-3-1 earn run average. Jack Flaherty, 1-2 with a 7-0-4 earn run average here in the postseason. That'll be game one, Friday, October 25th. Saturday, October 26th, that'll be game two. Yankees-Dodgers, Carlos Rodon, who's 1-1 this postseason with a 4-4-0 earn run average against Yoshinabu Yamamoto with a 5-1-1 earned run average. A lot of those runs came up game one, National League Divisional Series against San Diego. He's been great since then. And then we get into the argument for what is my X factor, and that's the third starter for the Dodgers. It'll probably be Walker Buehler. Walker Buehler looked very, very good. Probably the best we've seen Walker Buehler against the New York Mets at City Field. I think Walker Buehler is going to be your X factor for this game because, or excuse me, for this series. This is why. The Yankees have three starters. The Yankees have Cole. 
they have Rodon, and they have Clark Schmidt. The Dodgers have about two and a half. And it depends on which two is the full, you know, the full round number amongst Flaherty, Yamamoto, and Bueller. It really depends on the day. But amongst those three, one of them is probably going to be a half of themselves just because of health reasons. Walker Bueller is not the Walker Bueller, the Cy Young candidate that we've all known to come and, to come and love. Uh, since coming back from Tommy John surgery, the velocity hasn't quite been there. The stuff hasn't been there. The command hasn't quite been there. Look at plus stuff on fan graphs. Uh, it, it's far below his averages. So I think X factor for this series, especially in a best of seven, especially you're getting the two best teams in baseball, regular season records. This is probably, or at least odds are, it's going to be a long series. It's going to be seven games. It's going to be six games. And you can get through a series, a best of five, best of three, with two starters, and then you have a couple bullpen games. And a best of seven, especially if it goes deep, you're going to need a third starter. You're absolutely going to need a third starter to eat up four, five minimum innings. They're going to need Walker Bueller to do that exact thing. So I think the X factor for the Dodgers this series is going to be Walker Bueller. The X factor for the Yankees is actually not a single player for me. The X factor, or at least the key ingredient for the Yankees winning this series, get to the Dodgers bullpen. The Dodgers have been able to scrape by this postseason by using Johnny Holstaff. Johnny Holstaff has been probably the best pitcher of this postseason. Who is Johnny Holstaff? It's the Dodgers bullpen. The Dodgers have been able to script out games. They seem to be uh, dead, really, to the Padres. And then they went out and had a bullpen game in game four in San Diego, shut them down, destroyed the Padres in game four. Game five, Dom, uh, uh, they had a good start from Yamamoto, and then the bullpen took care of business the rest of the way in game five. Same thing with the New York Mets. They got good innings from, from Bueller, but Flaherty struggled against the Mets. Um, and in, they were able to script games. I want to say it was game game four. I think it was that the Dodgers scripted out um, scripted out their game and, and, and dominated. I don't have the scores in front of me, so I apologize. But what the Dodgers had done is they've essentially, as I kind of just mentioned, they've had two and a half starters. And then they've been able to script out. We're going to go with Vessia. Uh, we're going to go with Vessia, Phillips, Kopech, Banda Trinan, basically. And we're going to get one to two innings from each of those guys. We're going to have each of those guys face the order one time through, or each of those guys is going to go one inning, whatever it might be. You, they might, they've thrown in uh, Ryan Brazier. They've used Daniel Hudson, Honeywell as well. Uh, they even used Landon Knack at some point. But the Dodgers have been able to have two starters, two and a half, and then they script out one more. So, how do you combat that strategy? You have to get to the bullpen. You have to throw the Dodgers off script because that's what the Dodgers do so well. They use the analytics well. They're a matchup nightmare because they have a righty ready to go in the bullpen. They have a lefty and Vesia. And I, Vesia is injured right now. I understand that. But uh, they have Anthony Banda who stepped into his place for lefties. They're a matchup nightmare. Uh, and the only thing to combat that strategy is to take that script, light it on fire, and put it in a trash can. Because if you can get to a, a Michael Kopech, who they've used in that kind of bridge role to get to Trinan, if you can get to Michael Kopech in that 6th, 7th, 8th inning, then the, the Dodgers are like, oh, shit, we got to go Daniel Hudson here. We got to go Evan Phillips here, whatever it might be. If you can get to the bullpen, throw them off script, uh, I think that's where the Dodgers could struggle. Because up to this point, the Padres were not able to get to the Dodgers bullpen. It's 33. It was a tied a major league record with 33 consecutive scoreless innings. The Dodgers did um, in that National League Divisional Series leading into the National League Championship Series. So the Dodgers, uh, their bullpen, I think is, I know Tommy Edmond was deserving of MVP. I think the Dodgers bullpen has been the most valuable asset to them coming in. So I think the X factor for the Yankees, it's not a single player. It's getting whoever comes up in the order it has to be somebody that steps up and basically takes the Dodgers script and forces the Dodgers to rewrite that script. And if the Dodgers rewrite it and still succeed, you tip your cap, so be it. So that's the X factor for the Yankees, getting to, the, uh, getting to that Dodger bullpen. X factor for the Dodgers is going to be Walker Buehler. Comes down to pitching and defense, right? Always seems to. 
All right. So it wouldn't be an episode without at least, you know, I already kind of shit on it earlier in this episode with predictions and I don't know what's going to happen. Nobody does, but for the sake of conversation, I'll give my prediction. Uh, Logic tells me the Yankees will win in seven games because of health, because of depth, because the Dodgers have just been, like I said, crippled by injuries all season long. My gut tells me Dodgers in seven, and that's what I'm going to roll with. At this point, these things are impossible to predict. I didn't have the Mets even making the postseason. Here they were in the National League Championship Series. So MLB postseason, I've always compared it to the closest thing to the March Madness tournament, college basketball tournament every single year. It's completely unpredictable. It's just about, you know, Kike Hernandez gets hot at the right time, and um, it's just the way the postseason works. So I'm thinking Dodgers in seven because it just seems like they have that that special ingredient sauce, kind of like the Mets did coming into the championship series. Like they, they just have that it factor right now. And I can't define it. Maybe it's clutch hits. Uh, they do, they're hitting 330 in the postseason, the Dodgers are with runners in scoring position. So it's definitely timely hitting that has something to do with it. You look at the Yankees, runners in scoring position this postseason. They've really relied on their pitching. Runners in scoring position, the Yankees are hitting below the Mendoza line, below 200. So the Yankees have not gotten the timely hits. A lot of it is because they've pitched Judge and Soto tough. The Dodgers have been getting those clutch hits. It seems like the Dodgers just have that it factor. And I again, I say this to emphasize one more time. Neither of these teams are an underdog story, but I do think the Dodgers have a lot of likable figures. And I think they have more stories to root for, at least... Maybe this is my West Coast bias talking here. More stories to root for, uh, root for on the Dodgers side than the Yankees do. Of course, love Judge, love Soto. A lot of likable figures on the Yankees side of things. I guess I'm a sucker for wanting Kershaw to get that 162-game World Series ring. I don't know what it is. Last thing on my docket before I wrap things up here. Just shout out to my man Antonio on Twitter. Let me pull this up. So Antonio has no idea... I see any of this uh i've never responded to him his name's antonio ferro i believe um he's on twitter he, he's messaged me at least two three times every few months since 2019 the first message i ever got from antonio september 1st 2019 as i pulled up here Antonio said, hey, Danny, you throw around Astro and Dodger, better statistics to explain why the Yankees won't win the World Series, but more often than not, the, quote, best team does not win the title. I agree with that. That goes for any sport, Danny. What were statistics looking like in the last two Super Bowl meetings? Blah, 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 blah. And as far as the Astro GM talking big shit, I'll say he is going to eat it. The Yankees are the most famous and successful franchise in sports history. And when they rise... Hunks like you try to put them down. Don't waste your breath. This is my favorite part. Don't waste your breath. Because betting against the Yankees is like not believing in God. Good luck. That is a real direct message that I've received. I'm not going to, I don't want to have any negative energy going his way. So I'm not going to share his Twitter handle. I'm not going to share his last name. And Tony, if you're listening, you know who you are. Uh, but that's actually one of the, uh, my favorite troll direct messages i've ever received antonio doesn't know this either um last halloween my halloween costume almost a year ago to date actually um was i was a twitter troll so i wore a troll wig colorful wig from like the movie trolls and uh the shirt that i was wearing i posted or excuse me i i glued and taped on actual troll tweets and responses that I've received from social media. I'll throw the photo up here for our YouTube listeners. Um, and I actually posted and glued it to my shirt. That was my Halloween costume last year was Twitter troll. And what Antonio doesn't know is that his first direct message, which came, like I just said, back in 2019, I was right smack here on the middle of my shirt. My favorite, my favorite line of all time. Don't waste your breath because betting against the Yankees is like not believing in God. Good luck. And again, I, I've received messages from Antonio every few months for the last four years. And of course, it doesn't fail. I received a message from him October 22nd. 
received a message from him on October 21st, just reminding me of uh, Yankees being in the World Series. So thank you, Antonio, for that public service announcement. That'll do it. Episode 123, Wake and Rake podcast. I hope everybody enjoys the World Series. A lot of thoughts on the offseason coming up. We'll probably do some sort of World Series break uh, to chat next week. But until then, appreciate you tuning in. Hit that download and subscribe button on the YouTube. Uh, please leave us a review on Apple Podcasts and Spotify as well. We'll talk soon, people. Thank you.